Vale, contra todo pronóstico para variar con esta gente. Eh, son las 6 de la tarde, no han subido Fortune of the Room, han subido el Def Update directamente. Yo lo predije, me dijeron por el disco, me dijeron, no, hoy es Fortune Eterno, me lo subirán a lo largo de la semana. ¡Pum! Hola, ¿qué tal? Que sepas que todos estos vídeos están grabados en la plataformita morada. Si no me sigues en la plataformita morada, no sé qué haces que no me estás siguiendo en la plataformita morada. He dicho ya que hago directos en la plataformita morada. Oh, ¿por qué lo dices tanto, Lenny? Eres muy pesado. Pues sígueme en la plataformita morada y no seré tan pesado, crack. Venga, disfruta del vídeo. Def update. Van a hablar sobre todo lo relacionado con la expansión. There's a feature that that I've seen on the Reddit a couple times in the last year that people have been asking for. So why don't we start with that? Dan, can you tell us a little bit about Hi everybody. Uh yeah, I've I've seen those comments too, Scott. Um so when you when you hop into the uh the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion, vale. you're going to you're if you open up your map, you're going to see an icon and that icon is a uh, it's a horse head icon. If you go to that icon, it's it's in the north part of Everfall. You will be able to ride around our game on Mount. It's very exciting. Vale. Very exciting. Everfall. What can I ride? Well, when you start out, you're going to have uh, a horse. Um, I, I almost want to say like it's spoilers and we shouldn't say, but you get a horse, you get a wolf, and you get a lion. You get very un caballo, you, you un get lobo, a y un variety león. within each. Uh, there's kind of like a quest line to go with it. Um, And, Qué yeah. guapo, tío. So I don't know. One thing I think is pretty cool about uh, about mounts is, uh, you know, you don't start off at max speed. Like, like you actually, the, the more you ride them and the more things you do, you can get better at riding and that can gain speed. Other, like, can you talk just a little bit about like how you get better at going faster? Other ways you can like, is my mount stock? Can I do, can I make changes to it? Are there things I can do to enhance it? Yeah, so to go in a little more detail about how that works, uh, as, you, as you accumulate mounts, first of all, it, you know, the, they, they go into your kind of roster of mounts. You, you will have them forever at that point. You can rename them, whatever you want. They do come with cool names. Um, as, you, as you ride, uh, Mi you'll... Mi caballo you'll será blanco y se llamará Altivo. El que entienda, entendió. Go through kind of like a series of quests, and then there's alternate ways where you can accumulate uh, riding trade skill. The higher your trade skill, the faster you can ride. Uh, there's also a bunch of other uh, small bits and bobs along the way as you level. Uh, we have we have some slots for your mount where you can equip kind of like trinkets for them. Uh, where you can you know, customize how you want your mount to ride. Different different buffs that you get when you're dismounted. Uh, so it's 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 light, but there's a lot of variety there for sure. And I think you can also attach things to your mount, can't you? So, like, so visually, they like they look different. Absolutely, yeah. We have a uh, we have two slots on the back of your mount. They work in all the mounts. Sirve para algo eso. And there's a variety of ways to earn those. Everybody can see them as you as you ride around the world. It, it's it's so cool how much it changes the game. It's uh, one of the stories I've been telling internally that like is, is really cool to me is uh, when you do the ECRs. If you do those chest runs a lot, um, a lot of times like you'll go to Merkard and you'll be waiting for the mines to end. And like right now in live, it's, it, it feels really cool when you see 30, 40, 50 people run over the hill. Qué guapo. Just wait till you see that, like people on horses and wolves and lions. It's just, it's just cool. It changes the feel of the world. Vamos a hacernos todo el mapa de punta a punta en montura, eh. Solo lo digo. Lo dije. Hace, no sé, hace un año y medio, creo. O sea, cuando empezó el juego, creo que dije, cuando metan monturas, voy a hacer el mapa entero de punta a punta. Lo vamos a hacer. And the mounts just... A lot of care went into making the mounts come out and they feel really good the way just driving them through the world. So like, cannot wait to share that with players. We got a lot of very talented artists and animators working on these and that love shows. They're, they're, they really feel cool to ride. Qué guapo el sitio, eh? Cool, well, thanks, Dan. Um, you know, I think some of you had heard about the flail, but I thought I'd let Josh do a bit of a deep dive on the flail for us. Yeah, so the new weapon coming in the expansion is the flail. Uh, it can pair with the shield, similar to the sword and shield. And uh, there's two trees to it, like all weapons, but uh, it's more driven towards support and assisting allies over just raw DPS. So the left tree is more about healing and kind of debuffing enemies while buffing your allies. And then the right tree is more tanking and building up your survivability along with your allies. And also attacking enemies simultaneously. It's very aggressive weapon, but aggressively supportive. 
Es un soporte agresivo, dice. Oh, you want to go? Down? Yeah, one thing I was going to say, what I love about the weapon is that it's the first weapon that the actual weapon is animated, so it just looks cool. Like we call it a flail, but the head of the flail actually extends quite a bit. Like there's tons of cool whipping motion and like some of the abilities just look really, really Está cool. Está bastante chulo, la verdad. Yeah, I was going to say that's kind of where I was going. It, like when you're in gameplay, it just feels different than everything else in the game, and it's it's kind of cool to be like a, a kind of a short ranged melee or a ranged melee at, at times. And I think uh, I think the animators did a great job. I think the VFX are really cool, but it it, it It's really neat Tengo interés to ver cómo será el ataque básico. Yeah, I think what I like about it is it, it gives another option to healers and to tanks, right? Like you can use it as an off tank or as an off heal, and I think it's just going to open up a lot of cool build options. And we're usually surprised by the players finding different ways to play with it, so I'm sure they'll find a DPS option that we just kind of hadn't considered, and that's, that's pretty cool as well. No, it's mine now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> es que hay mucha gente que se quejaba de esto, que decía, no, pero Lenny, esta expansión eh, para los nuevos jugadores es eh, impedirles jugar. Para nada, es todo lo contrario. Esta, esta expansión lo que va a hacer es que los nuevos jugadores tengáis muchas más oportunidades de jugar al juego. Porque van a aumentar el, todas las cantidades de nivel de, de mutadas que puedes hacer a la semana, que van a ser 100, en vez de 25, que eran, si no me equivoco. Vas a poder hacer 100 intentos de mutada. Y encima solo van a haber tres niveles. Y no van a haber ni Banes ni Wars. Por lo tanto, no te van a, ver a meter ningún requisito más del que sepas hacerte las mecánicas de la mutada. Así que en ese aspecto va a ser mucho más fácil encontrar partida, para empezar. Mucho más fácil encontrar eh, una mutada. Y mucho más fácil que puedas jugar mutadas con gente. Por ese impedimento de que era imposible. Eh, yo mismo, que yo tenía Wars y Banes y tenía todo el equipo bien, era imposible. Era imposible. Y después de este cambio, yo creo que va a ser muchísimo más sencillo y va a ser muchísimo más disfrutable en ese aspecto. Así que ya os digo que son cambios para bien para todos. Uh, yeah, so with that, we also made changes to mutations. The, the biggest changes are one, we brought it down to only three levels. Uh, we did this because one, we wanted to make getting a group and getting into a mutation just easier and there'll be less, you know, areas you have to do. And, and also there was sort of like a dead zone a lot of times in like that mutation two through four level. There was a dead zone again in the mid range before you hit 10. So Literal. I think, you know, this will help that. Uh, and we also did some rebalancing while we did this, right? So like M1 is now our, our new, what we're calling like my first mutation, you know? So like you shouldn't feel too intimidated to do that. Once you finish Elysian Wiles, Uh, you'll be roughly 650 gear score. Like, you should feel comfortable jumping right into the M1. No wards needed anymore. Like, that should be cool content. Uh, and then on the other hand, we made M3 a little bit harder. Like, we wanted to push the boundaries and make that challenging. Uh, the way the rewards work, you know, there was a lot of incentives to do M10s. Uh, we've, we've really adjusted that. So, like, as long as you're doing mutations, you're going to get good rewards. It's, you know, you'll get them at a slightly quicker pace at M3, but it isn't, it isn't a huge, huge deal. Me gusta, me gusta. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we really wanted to show something unique and different um, that you have never seen in New World before. And so when you first enter the zone, it's almost like you're entering a dimension or a new portal. Um, the energy of the whole game changes, the look and feel, the mood and vibe. Suddenly you're in um, Adiana's garden and you're the invader. Um, and there's so many new and interesting threats and hazards. Uh, meeting the Beast Lords is another really cool portion of the story. Um, and just seeing what has changed in First Light, it's not a total redo. We sort of, we wanted to tell the story of this POI or this settlement Um, what happened to it when it was destroyed, and um, we took a lot of care in managing uh, legacy stories from First Light and integrating it into this major event of this apocalypse. Um, one but, of the things, sorry to interrupt, but like one of the things that I found really cool when I was going through the zone was that there's still little remnants of First Light. So it does look like when you go into it, your expectation of seeing any part of First Light is totally gone. But then as you progress through that zone, there's like... I was going to talk a little bit about the ECRs that we're introducing. Well, let me, let's, let me just oh. do one sidetrack first. Because um, another thing, like right when you walk into the zone that really hit me, And I know this was one of our, one of our goals was to make, like, we, didn't, we wanted the AI to feel very different. And right when you walk into the zone, like, the first creatures you see, it carries on. There's so many new AI, and I was hoping that maybe Gwyn could talk about some of that. 
Oh, I would be happy to talk about that. My favorite thing when I first went into the Elysian Wilds is, first of all, you're hit with the zone itself. It's so beautiful, but things get so Qué much bonito. more terrifying when you find yourself surrounded by armored dragons Qué and mammoths rato. and all these crazy wow, el creatures. Como mola, eh? It feels so primordial. Una rata and eso? it just, it's so heart pounding when you've got these big, beastly creatures. Eh? all over you so you get to fight all these new creatures we got the hercene family introduced for some new narrative and we're just getting started with all of them when it's not just the, the beasts and creatures right i mean like you run into the woods to hide and then a mushroom might attack you or like other things are alive that like, like holy cow this thing there's oh. nowhere safe here and don't forget we've got If you like just squishing the scorpions in Brimstone, <laughs> you're gonna love that with the beetles that we've got in the Elysian Wilds. <laughs> I know I love squishing a beetle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, so David, you you started talking about ECRs, so let's uh, let's get back to that. That's that, yeah, I yeah. Know you had a lot of fun with some of these. Um, you had a juego? To, I do want to talk about those beetles, though. Uh, <laughs> they're uh, they also glow and they're fireflies, and at night the entire zone becomes this bioluminescent wonderland as well, um, which I really love. But the ECRs, uh, there's, two, there's actually f two major ones and then two sort of elite overlords that we introduced in Brimstone. Um, the two big ones are very beast themed. Um, this is where you'll meet some of the new creatures um, and you will have access to new resources. Um, they're are now apes in First Light. Qué bien and hecho, one eh? of the things you can Wait, now what's find... First Light? Oh, sorry, Elise. Okay. Okay. Um, now you can, um, because of those, now you can add, we added bananas to a lot of the trees in the game. Amarillo so now that's plátano. a new resource. There's lots of new stuff to gather. Lo han hecho. Well. But um, the, there's one ECR up in the north of Elysian Wilds called the Isle of Zervan. And uh, this is just like a, a large open area designed for mounts in a way. Um, you climb up this great like trial and challenge as a group. Uy, uy, guy, there's eh? multiple puzzles to get through and to parkour, the mola, mola, um, There's magical bridges that appear once you Mira? commune with the beast eh. lords and receive their power, Esta you can activate them eso, eh? um, and let everyone in the ECR travel across together. Um, there's a lot of cool surprises on them and there's two giant you know, lions at the very top that can leap and go around the um, the arena there. It's really cool, and the view from the top is phenomenal. Um, there's another one in the south called Tribunal High Mound, and that's another beast-themed uh, ECR. And that one is cool because you see a lot more Come variety of creatures that we don't have in the other. So you'll see lizards, giant lizards. You'll see um, chameleons that can go invisible. Um, and if they die while they're invisible, you still have to find their body to skin them, which I think is a cool feature. Um, but you'll, you'll dive into some ancient ruins and, and you'll defeat a number of, of things and you'll pop out right next to the... Uh, the, the, vision, the <laughs> you hear me? The Savage Divide is really, it's the culmination of the invasive hey. growth. Uh, it's a real showcase for all of our amazing no, no, beasts no, no, no. and beast lords. And uh, we kind of thought about it like uh, thinking about the San Diego Zoo, there's exhibits for all bonito, the different creatures, eh? but they're kind of mixed Mira, together. So we took that kind of approach so that Boy, all of the areas person. within the Savage Divide would feel different Qué from bonito, each other, tío. players don't get lost, and it's all unique and interesting and um, supports those uh, beast lords and the elemental, the elemental beast lords as well. That is so cool, Rosie. You know what, what blows Tengo my mind? Tengo una teoría para esta mazmorra y es que creo que va a haber alguna zona que vamos a tener que ir bajo el agua. De alguna forma, no sé cómo. A lo mejor con una montura, es posible, no lo sé. Pero tengo esa teoría. Porque van a meter próximamente la, la zona esa de agua que tiene que traer el modo acuático este que ya dije, ya se filtró. Creo que van a meter como un sneak peek en esta mazmorra. Estaría bastante bien, la verdad. Molaría. Because we've gotten this far... And we haven't talked about mammoths yet. What? I what? know, how is that even possible? What? 
Oh, no. I love the mammoths. There's something really, really mucho. satisfying, like, on a primal level about going out into the Pero wild and guapos. taking down a big old mammoth. He's stomping around. He's swinging at you. And you just bring him down. Oh. I would... I'm really excited for everybody to get out there and hunt mammoths. Let's all go <laughs> mammoth hunting together. Okay, you're, you're selling past the clothes, but keep going. <laughs> no, no. You want me to just keep talking about mammoths? You want no, me to talk what about else, the what big else mammoths? What else might I find in the Savage Divide? Oh, man. Okay, did I talk about the squishing beetles? Loca, Again, no I love esta? squishing the beetles. You've got you've ver, got exploding si sprouts. You've got the chameleons going invisible on you. You've got armored dragons. You've got the ursines. You've got corvids Dragones? flying up into the air and so, raining feathers down on you. For those of us that don't know what a corvid is, why don't you just give me a little description? Like what? What's because it's dragones? Like, ha dicho. I don't know what a corvid is. The corvid is a big old bird. Like you think about crows, that's one of the corvid family. But our crows are a combination of humans and animals that have died somewhere close to each other and resurrected in a combination. That's our hercine family. You've got the birds, you've got boars, you've got reindeer. All of these creatures that have come out from everything that's just gone crazy and wild with the Elysian wilds. You even have the rats, right? We've got and the then, rats. And then you've got the bunnies with the bunny surprise is what I call them. So we don't have to get into what the surprise is, but it's definitely a bunny surprise. Um, and I think like probably one of the coolest things from somebody, you know, who runs our expeditions, we always want to know about the bosses. I think that these bosses have very cool and unique mechanics that players have not seen before. There's mammoths in the expedition too. Hello, the biggest mammoth Un of boss. all. I think what you have to realize with our Savage Divide is with everything that we've been doing in the Ennead and Brimstone, we've unleashed a whole new level of magic into Eternum. So everything that you're seeing in the expedition has gotten a lot more wild and crazy. Me gusta, got, me gusta. Everything is much more magical. The bosses are bigger and badder than ever. Probably our hardest expedition bosses yet. And they're throwing Cuidado, out all eh? sorts of magic spells. It's going to be really fun. So yeah, all of the creatures, all of this stuff culminates in a really cool reward. JR, why don't you talk to us about the new heart rune, Primal Fury. Eso, eso, está guapa la nueva runa, eh? Uh, yeah, so this heart rune is one of our most ambitious heart runes to date uh, because it's not just a single attack like la, the other la, heart runes, but la it actually puts you in this state. So you're in this, this beast-like state where you'll... You, you become larger and your, 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 uh, your light attacks change to like these melee Entonces, strikes. Grande, a and and your heavy attack is this leaping strike that uh, jumps on your opponent and knocks them down. Um, and then, uh, and then variants for it are also kind of interesting. So like the brutal variant, uh, you will do more damage, uh, but at the cost of taking more damage. And actually, as you damage your opponent, it will extend the duration so you can, you can get more more of your, uh, your, your large form. Um, and then the spell warp version is kind of the inverse, so you'll, uh, you'll deal less damage, uh, but you'll, you'll also take less damage, and you actually extend the duration by taking damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's kind of crazy making it bigger. Um, I, it's fun it's to see it, but I'm already waiting for some screenshots or some videos of people finding really weird places to do that and seeing what happens. It's going to be... It's yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. So we we actually there were a lot of things that you could so because it's a state that like it's always active while you're in the state, uh, it definitely opened up the this whole other realm of like like I want I don't want to call them bugs because because no, actually no, no, they're no, more no, like no, features no. like they're they're interesting things that come from like you know like you can flip a table when you're in this state or you, and and there was actually like one thing that. I, I, I know it's not really like necessary, but I wanted to include it, which was uh, you can open your inventory like while you're in this state, and there and you're, you you'll you can see yourself as in beast form, and it's just kind of funny. Like, but you know, you might want to use your inventory while you're while you're uh, raging out. Hey. Experience. We left a few elite chests oh. around there for the um, the climbers in the in the player base, um, and some of the some of the more jumping puzzle like areas. Uh, but we took the bosses, and since they are favored by a lot of people, they get farmed for certain things, um, we put them in their own little arena somewhere in Eden Grove, which you can look for. Um, Shh. We, tell them we'll let them find them. Oh. 
Uh, it's, uh, it's just southeast of malevolence. Hey, Scott, I don't give a what you say. I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere in there. I can't give you an exact coordinate, but I can picture it. Um, no, it, it is, it's close to Zagoramets Grove, which is the trial. So. <laughs> it's awesome. I think, uh, in, like, we're joking a lot, but it's really interesting to try, like, like we have to meter voices in solitario. Van a meter como a una mini CR, instancia para, like para cargarse a, a, a los mini voces esos de élite. Taking out the Está things bien. that were really neat and, like, or not taking out, leaving in the things that were really neat, moving the things that the groups wanted somewhere else so they still have access to that but giving more players the ability to check out this content. And we'll see Me how it bien, la verdad. Like, this is the first time we've done this. If it works, we might look at other places. Va a ir bien, porque es know, necesario. I think that's kind of something that we've shown along the way that we like to like, like try things. See what people think and figure out: Do we do more of that or do we less of it? So, es un pequeño oh, paso really... para que lo que yo dije desde hace mucho tiempo y es meter zonas de élite por instancia y que haya un límite de jugadores que quepan dentro de esa mini instancia de zonas de élite. Es literalmente lo que digo, lo que llevo diciendo desde el principio y es un pequeño paso. Cool. Estoy contento. Um, we have one more thing to talk about, and I'm going to let Rachel fill us in. We've talked a lot about like some of the influence changes we're making, but we haven't got really specific. So. She's behind me, Rachel. Yes. You want to go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, uh, I am so excited for Influence V2. So now every single day there will be influence races scheduled in vale. three territories, and during these influence races, capture points will become available in that zone um, that you can go and capture with your faction. You're fighting other factions. I think that a lot of us agree that open world PvP is maybe the most fun PvP. So now you have all these, you have three capture points plus the fort to go after. They give you a trickle of influence and they also boost the amount of influence that you earn from missions. We're updating the PvP missions to be a little bit closer to the towers or well, we're calling them towers, but they're really watches or capture points around the, the territory. Um, but there'll be the PvP missions will be a little closer in. Um, and so it'll be very well rewarded too. So you get a lot of Azos, a lot of. Esto va a devolver muchísimo el PvP mundo abierto, eh. Lo va a devolver que flipas. Y diría que va a ser incluso más divertido que hacer guerras o que hacer cualquier otro modo. Going towards your PvP rewards track um, during these 45 minutes of the influence race. Outside of the influence race, one other thing that we're adding in is that a fort lock. Um, so every time you capture a fort, it will be locked for an hour. There will be a timer on the map so you know when that fort is going to be ready to be unlocked again and you know when to go after it. Um, but also your faction now gets that guaranteed benefit for an hour from that fort. Qué guay. Mucha cosa que cortar. Uh, one quick announcement. The PTR is coming soon. Vale, ¿cuándo? How specific is that? Soon. Uh, but it's getting there. As soon as it's ready, we'll put it up. And... Uh, that's it. If you like what you saw, please tell Wait, us. Wait, I'm going to interrupt you. So this, there is something that's going to be different about this PTR phase that I want players to get vale, ready for. So once the announcement goes out, this is going to be a short PTR phase. Previously, we've had the PTR up for three weeks, four weeks, in some instances, five weeks that we've had content rolling through. This is going to be a one-time the build's going out, you play it for a limited time, which we'll have details coming out soon, Limitado. but then it's going to shut down ahead of our release. Limitado. So get play in, give us your feedback as quick as possible so we have time to make adjustments, and we will do our next Q&A okay. shortly after the PTR comes out. With that, if you like what you saw, I'll finish what I'm saying now, subscribe, like us, Perfecto. follow, all those fun things. Venga, Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you all. In <laughs>